Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a video that Rudy made. So this is a in response video. And he is very mad in the video due to the $250 direct box that I believe is named Guild of Ravnica Mythic Box. And this Mythic Box has eight planeswalkers. But most importantly, what it has is it has 18 booster packs. So it is the first time I believe that Wizard of the Coast has directly sold booster packs, which isn't good for local game stores. I've mentioned before, Target, Walmart, GameStop, I think they're going to be okay because they have mystery packs and people don't go to Target the majority of people who buy Magic product in Target buy it as a add-on because they're very casual. People are not that casual who go to a local game store. People who go to a local game store to buy Magic cards are more pr price aware and they are there probably to buy the cards as opposed to in Walmart, oh, I'm going to buy a $6 chicken for dinner tonight and this $25 or $20 mystery box. And mystery boxes do incredibly well on YouTube, uh, much better than I would say a regular booster box of any type. So Rudy is very upset. And of course he has his Pokemon background, which is not by it's not a coincidence that whenever he gets really upset at Magic the Gathering, he will have that background. Now, some of the points that he mentions is the danger of this. So not only is the local game store getting hosed, the distributor is getting hosed on that level. And that's new. That's new. Uh, normally, a distributor is... Well, let me go back to what actually happened. Wizard of Coast recently laid off a bunch of people who were in charge of being distributors. So you would have your big distributors that were partnered with Wizard of Coast, but not part of Wizard of Coast. And then you would have Wizard of Coast selling directly to game stores. Well, the that team got fired, and I'm sure a new team of e-commerce specialists got hired. And their job is probably to directly sell product, not to stores anymore, but to consumers. By doing that, they actually offer a lot of competition to distributors. Why buy a pack from a distributor? Why buy a box from a distributor? Or why buy a box from a local game store? If I can just buy it directly from Wizard of the Coast and I get a limited promo as well. And that's the key. If... Everything's the same. If Rudy's selling a box for 80 bucks online and a local game store is selling for $80, which they probably have to eat a loss at that point with overhead, and Wizard of Coast is selling an $80 booster box, who are you going to buy from? You might say, oh, Rudy, because I like his channel. Okay, what if I did this? What if I gave you a special limited edition Nexus of Fate or a special limited edition Planeswalker and all you have to do is pay the same. Just like how Funko has that limited edition but instead of a box for 80 I'll make it 100 but you also get that Planeswalker. Everyone will buy from Wizard of the Coast to get that limited edition Planeswalker. This is not me making it up. If Funko has their, their website sucks. Their back end uh, my friend collects a lot of Funko figures, and one day a week, I think Monday, Tuesday, one of those weekdays, they post exactly at noon or something, or nine or something, midnight maybe, and people go and buy it, and then the website crashes. So my friend wants to know, like, oh, hey, like, why does that happen so much? And that's, we had a long discussion, so I know about the Funko limited figures. I know that some of them sell out within 10 minutes. And if you leave it in your cart, that's not enough. You have to actually get to checkout. And sometimes you have to use the app. The we regular website doesn't have that figure. You have to use the app. And then sometimes the app is broken and you have to use a website. So there's a lot of, there ha there's a very large team that's trying to figure this out. 
every single business is going online. It doesn't matter if you're Walmart and you have all these great retail stores. No, they're working super hard to try to convince customers to order online and then do pickup or delivery. Amazon obviously is a behemoth, right? They bought Whole Foods, so now you can get your food really easy online. I order all the time from Amazon online uh, for food. All of our company snacks are ordered from Amazon and it's repeating because we get that 5% discount. This is very, very bad for Rudy. This is very bad for local game stores. If you own a local game store and your core revenue is selling boxes, you're going to get hosed because Wizard of Coast is not selling boxes and there's no way for you to compete against them because you don't have these limited this and special masterpiece planeswalkers. And as much as someone loves your local game store, they don't... I, I love my local game store, but they don't have this product. And if, if so happens I buy four of these because I want four Elspeths, guess who's not buying any boxes from his local game store for this set? Because I already have all the packs I need. And that's the reason that I think Rudy... It's hard to be a business when you rely on someone else and that someone else is as volatile as Wizard of Coast. Business is based on predictability and stability. So there's a difference. Stability means you kind of do things. If you do something new, you're going to do that for a long time. Wizard of Coast is not stable because when they tried the new format, the 2-2-2 format, they gave up before they even could reach the first format change. They just gave up. And we had terrible standards at the time because we had, we had sets that should not have been interacting with each other. Now, predictability is also very volatile. Um, a lot of things that I would predict, um, I would probably have never predicted that Wizard Coast would sell booster packs online direct to consumer because that would negate the need for a distributor or that would negate the need for a local game store. And I would assume that local game stores are incredibly valuable due to the fact that that's why people play Magic. But that's wrong. What Wizard Coast is saying is, hey, the majority of players are casual players. They play with their friends. They play at home. They play at school. Maybe we don't need local game stores and let's just butcher them. And that's what they're getting done. Um, that's what people can still buy Magic Cards. If every local game store goes out of business, you can still buy Magic Cards from Walmart or Wizard Coast Direct or eBay, or any of these online retailers, but you want to have a place to play Magic, but that's okay, because the place to play Magic will just be your home in the future. That takes away from the magic, I guess, pun intended, of Magic, where you can go to anywhere, a new place, an old place, and you can sit down and you can play someone that you don't feel comfortable letting in your home that you have never met before. And you can become friends and feel comfortable adding them to your play group. So the beauty of Magic when I grew up was you play Magic, you're a nerd. You, I play Magic, I'm a nerd. All right, even if I don't like you, we'll still be, I'll be at your sleepover, you'll be at my sleepover. We're playing during lunchtime, we'll play um, if we have a study hall together. And that's the beauty of magic is you make friends. It forces you to make friends when you otherwise were not um, with people that you don't normally see. Because if you're my, one of my friends, he's a doctor. He's actually a medical doctor. And it's hard, you know, it's hard for him not to have doctor friends. It's hard for me not to have business startup friends because that's what I do all the time. And that's what I mean on my other channel. That's what I talk about all the time. And that's actually what I'm not a Magic the Gathering pro, but I at least know marketing enough to have a business with employees that have kids that I can support. I mean, no one's going to work for you uh, with kids. One of my employees has, uh, she's under one years old and then uh, a four or five year old. No one's going to risk their family unless they think that you're believing the boss and especially a small company. Otherwise, like if you go out of business, guess what just happened to that family with two little kids? Like it's terrible, right? Um, and that's a big responsibility. 
And that's what I know. So I'm not saying I know everything about magic, but I totally get why Rudy is very upset. Because to do business, you have to be predictable and you have to be stable. There's a lot of instability. Uh, there's a, and I cannot predict. And all, all these YouTube channels and content creators that tell you they can predict what's going, this is the first time in a long time that this has even been discussed. And for everyone who says, oh, I know X, I know Y, you really don't know because the company, I don't think the company even knows what it's doing beforehand, right? They came up with this grand plan of the two set block and then they took it away. They came out with literally like the best example I can give you of this is Modern Masters 25. Honestly, that was what they believed was a really good set. It's selling for 150, 160, MSRP is 240. And it's boxes littered everywhere in my local games and around where I live. There's people people can't move it at 160. And this is supposed to be a set to celebrate 25 years of magic. And yet it's utter crap. So I think the problem is not that Wizard Coast is not trying. I think they had the wrong people. They hired the wrong people. They hired people based on political beliefs and genders and race and all these things that it's nice to have, but I I view them as a bonus. Um, It's great that we have bonus, but if someone's overqualified or someone's better, more qualified, then you hire a more qualified person, even if he is a white male. Right, but if people are equally qualified, then you just hire them in personality. Now, if someone is, is um, has the potential to grow, and you see that in them, and they haven't had opportunities in the past, but their uh, growth curve is probably more exponential, then you know I do make hiring and firing decisions all the time. I'm making one right now. Uh, making one right now on a social media specialist, whether or not uh, she will stay or not. By the time this video is uploaded, I've already. Mm, that's not true. No, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. I've already had made that decision. So, I mean, Rudy's upset and he has every right to be upset. Uh, and I would be pissed too if I had any, if I was a game store owner that relied on Wage of the Coast, I would be upset. If I was a customer that did not have much as much um, disposal income as other customers, I would be upset because... Uh, you you can always say don't buy if you can't afford it. Don't buy. You don't need to buy all the products. But it's literally spitting in someone's face when they have an amazing, awesome pl- product for planeswalkers, right? For casual players, and none of the casual players can afford it, and it goes all to collectors who are then going to spike the price and then sell it back to the casual player. Because that's literally what happens with every San Diego Comic Con is as soon as the website goes, the robots buy all the things, and then on Craigslist, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, then you see these things that were selling for $110, and now they're $300 online. You know, like, what the blank? So, Rudy has every reason to be upset, but I don't think Wizard of Coast is going to change. If you have a local game store, if you... He made... One of his uh, previous videos was... Why should or why do people still want to make local game stores when 70% of them fail? Just work on your collection. You don't need a store to build a really cool magic collection. You don't need a store to have a great, amazing play group. You can be an online store and you can just buy what you can make money off and you don't need to continue to buy these crap ass boxes like Core 2019 and Hour of Devastation. Like, You know it's bad when people have to say Commander 2018 was a good set. Like, people are saying this. No. The MSRP went up. The card quality went down. The expected value... I mean, they could have thrown so many $1 or $2 cards to make it actually a a good product, but they chose. They chose not to. That's why I need to get banned so I can hit them on a secondary market. Like a lot of this is based on the fact that they pretend they don't know there's a secondary market. A lot of the problems, if not all the problems in the MTG economy is based on the fact they cannot recognize the secondary market. Otherwise, they would be construed as gambling. 
and then maybe have to pay a tax or a fee to the government. God forbid you pay taxes to the government, right? And that's what Hasbro wants to avoid. They don't want to be called a loot crate. They don't want to be called gambling. But by doing this, clearly they recognize that they're secondary market value. They didn't pick the best Planeswalkers because we will get another product. And uh, what's it? Ravnica Allegiance or Alliance or whatever? I'm sure that we'll have more Planeswalkers in that product. And that will also come with 18 booster packs of uh, Ravnica Allegiance. Terrible. Just uh, awful. But that doesn't mean I'm not... I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe I, I won't buy the product. But I really want that Elspeth. Anyway, bye guys.